Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to be with you today. I hope you can see me and hear me very clearly. I'm Pastor Luke J. Robinson, and I'm here at Quinn Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church, where Jesus is Lord, and we are excited to be in the house of God today. Thank God for one more day. Thank God for this opportunity to uh, uh, hear the word of God. I want to be sharing with you today about uh, walking children of the light. We are the children of the light, okay? Uh, and and there, wherefore the scriptures tell us in e Ephesians 5, 1, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, but because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Verse 8 says, For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness all righteousness and in all truth finding out that what is what finding out what is acceptable to the lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them reveal them show them for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, us who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand that the, what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, and which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Let us look to God in prayer. Father, we want to thank you again for this morning, for this day. And we ask, Lord, that you will bless us as we look into this word today. We ask you, you will encourage someone out there who is going through something. And those who are listening to me, Lord God, may their time be fruitful, that you will speak through your spirit, that they may hear from you in spite of human, uh, um, a human being uh, actually delivering the word. Let the spirit of the living God be upon them. Lord, we just ask now, Lord God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. We, are, we have opened up our church again, and we're thankful to God for that. We have put in uh, practice, all kind, uh, place, all kinds of measures to make sure that those who come are safe. Uh, we are asking those who are interested in coming uh, to call our church office. You'll find that number at the conclusion of this message and um, uh, make an appointment because due to the COVID situation, our numbers have been drastically uh, uh, reduced. Uh, so um, we uh, look forward to those who sign up to come and we're looking forward to having a great time. Uh, we, we've had several uh, services since we uh, started back in, in open service and um, God has blessed us. Uh, feel free to call us and uh, make arrangements to be with us in one of those services and you'll find that God will be a blessing for you. God bless you. Now I want to talk from this subject of 
uh, children uh, of light or walk as ch walk as children of the light. Now, uh, that's coming out of Ephesians 5, 1 through 12, 21. And there are some other scriptures. I'll give them to you as we go along. Uh, now, um, I think if you watch, look around, you will see surely the world is, in, is dark and is seemingly getting darker moment by moment. The darkness of my youth and preteen years now seems to be a period of great light. Yet those days were dark and evil as well. However, I can see that these days in which we are living now are evil, but they are more evil and darker than when I was a child. So in other words, the things are getting worse as time goes on. And God kind of uh, encouraged us that that would happen until his return. Now, I got a hold of some letters uh, written by teenage lovers of the 1920s and the 1930s, or from the 20s to the 30s. And during that time, that was the time of my parents' youth. And, and I could clearly see that sin and darkness is nothing new. I mean, they had their sin stuff going on, and it was obvious in that letter. And I was kind of like, wow, uh, things haven't changed a whole lot. Uh, in that sense, that sin is has been around for a long time. The Bible says to us that that sin, um, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, that sin passed from Adam on to all the generations. So sin has been passing along all the time and it's getting darker and darker and darker as time. Now, we, we in many cases, people think we can heal this darkness uh, by science, by education, and all of those things. It's not going to happen. Uh, it's going to be healed by our reliance on Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can make you righteous. Only Jesus Christ can turn you away from darkness. Only Jesus Christ can make you a new creature. So there is a great frustration today as we look around. Uh, and and uh, uh, there's frustration about the guns and the killing of police and others. Fear has overtaken the land. Now, some children now, uh, some children now have taken to the streets to save the world. So they think. But have you thought about days past when there were also great challenges back in prior days and when I was growing up? There were fears back there. There was anxieties and, and yes, great darkness. How about World War I? I think World War I was the uh, war to stop all wars. But guess what happened after that? World War II came along. Then we had the issues with segregation and, uh, and, and lynches. And sometimes we say, well, you know, we had the racial thing. Ben, that's been going on for a while. Uh, uh, separate and unequal. Uh, the, uh, there was a situation when I was coming up that in part of Virginia that I think it's Prince Edward County, not thinking it, it was Prince Edward County, Virginia. They shut the schoolhouse down uh, and uh, African American because they didn't want to integrate their school systems. And um, so for five years, the school system was shut down. Uh, so it, 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 was, it has never really been a whole lot of uh, uh, equal has been a lot of separation. <laughs> uh, the Cuban, you remember the Cuban crisis missile, uh, the Cuban missile crisis thing? I remember that. I remember that in elementary school, what happened was uh, they were telling us uh, that uh, uh, the Cuban, that uh, Russia had sent missiles down into Cuba and this, uh, this gas, uh, uh, this nuclear fallout, I would think it would be called, uh, I would destroy you. And they had us, and I, you know, getting on the little desk, uh, um, practicing. So when this thing fall, little did I know that if that, if they had dropped one of them atom bombs, that would have towed that little building up, tow a hole in the ground, tow up my next hundred some miles, and we hiding under a little desk. My Lord. So we had some fears. We had troubles. There were darkness. There were evil. These things were going on, uh, and, and 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 then there was a. Uh, the civil rights marches. You remember those? Yeah, they were kind of rough too. And there was the bombing of the Greyhound bus during those times. And then there was a Great Depression. And then, then there was the Korean War and the Vietnam War. And, and, uh, uh, and the races putting uh, dogs on... Um, on children, the bombing of, of and the killing of the four black children, uh, four black girls in the church in Montgomery, Alabama on Sunday, September the 15th, 1963. How about that for a thing? Uh, that's been almost 
40 years, I believe it is, uh, and, and the upheaval uh, um, uh, 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 after the killing of Dr. Martin Luther King. And then uh, there was 9-11 uh, in, in September the, uh, uh, the 11th, 2001, when the nation was attacked from outside. So darkness and evil has been with us, and, and it will be with us until he, he, the great one, he the great one, the Messiah, he the great one, the Messiah, the Lord of glory, the light of the world, <coughs> comes again. And Jesus said in Luke 21, 25 through 28, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexities, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them, from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the face of the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Now, that goes beyond Corona uh, 19, because right now we have a lot of fear going on. People are afraid of, of, of so many things because they're afraid that they might die because of the Corona, and rightly so. Uh, the Corona hasn't proved to be a, 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 a easy thing to deal with. It's, it's proven to kill a lot of people. And so there is a lot of fear. But the Bible even suggests that in spite of all that we're going through right now, it's going to get a lot worse. And the fear is going to get greater. Then they, uh, the Bible said, then they will see God, the Son of Man coming in the clouds with the power and great glory. Now, what he's saying is that, yeah, it's going to get worse, but there's going to be a point when the things get so bad that Jesus Christ himself is going to come through the sky and those who see him, those who are waiting for him, are going to be very excited about his coming. They're going to be waiting. And then, then the scripture even tells us that in 1 um, um, uh, 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 Thessalonians chapter uh, 4, uh, it talks about verse 13, 15, down and through 18. It talks about that the trump of God will sound and the dead in Christ will rise. So, and, and we who are alive will caught up the meeting. So, there is a meeting and an expectation of Jesus Christ coming back into the world. He's coming back again, and He is a light, and all of us who have hooked up to His light will be a part of the glory of God. And thank God, you know what? That glory of God is going to be forever. Thank, it's not going to be just for a short moment. Now, some of you are going through a storm right now, rightly so, because there's so many things happening right now. But there is going to come a day when all this stuff is going to be wiped away. You're not going to be dealing with that anymore because Jesus coming back, he's going to put away, he's going to, he's going to bind Satan up for the rest of his life. And, and the Bible said that the, and all those who choose to be on Satan's side will be a part of that, uh, of that destruction and a part of that anguish and pain for those people. But God is saying to us now, uh, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can have the light of God inside of you. You, you can have the hope of God that goes beyond uh, death, uh, the, the hope of God that goes beyond the grave, the hope of God that goes beyond fear. For God, the Bible said God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love power and a sound mind. So we have this power to overcome. We have this power to overcome darkness. We have this power to overcome the things of night. The darkness is getting, is getting deeper. Yes, it is. It's getting darker. It's getting darker. And God is calling us to be light in a dark world. The, the folks out there now cannot control this darkness. Uh, only uh, things can control, only, the, only light can control and overcome darkness. The, the church of the living God has overcome this darkness. You and I must get, can overcome, I can overcome this darkness. You and I must get on board with Jesus. We must get on the, get on the ark. Yes, the ark of Jesus. The power is in the body of Christ. Well, what's the body of Christ? It's called the church. Now, believers are called in Matthew 5, 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt lose its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to throw, be thrown out and to travel under feet. Now, notice <coughs> the Bible said you are to be salt and light. Now, salt is, has two purposes that, that is, is meaningful for us. Number one, salt is a preservator. A preserver uh, and keeps things from decaying, and salt is also gives faith uh, flavor. Now, as a um, 
as a preserver, when I was a little boy, we used to kill the hogs and, and you, they used to uh, cut the meat all up and they salt the meat down with salt and they put the salt on the meat. And the purpose here is that the meat would not spoil. And so God is calling you and me, he's calling us to be salty, to preserve the truths of God's word, the things of God, so that those who partake of it can be blessed. Then there, there's another thing that talks about that salt is not only a preserver, but salt is a, is a flavor giver. And so the, the children of God should give flavor to things, should bring sweetness or a good taste to that which is, is in the world. Now, the Bible talks about the fact that, 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 um, that uh, salt is a, is a flavor, and, and, and so we ought to bring that kind of flavor to the world because we've been with Jesus Christ, all right? It is then good for nothing uh, if the salt loses its flavor. If it, if it loses its, its, its salt and its, its, its ability to preserve, what good is the salt? It is, it is it's good for nothing. But the Bible says to be thrown uh, out and trampled upon. Uh, under the uh, underfoot by men. Now, if if I'm salt and if I'm light, uh, uh, then I should be able to bring uh, newness to a world that is dying. I can bring hope to the world. I can give light to the world. I can walk as Jesus walked. So as a child of God, you and I must walk in the light of Jesus Christ in his word. We got to study his word, know his word, and so that we can present his word to a world that is dying. You know what the Bible says of us uh, and you? You are the light of the world. I am the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So what God is saying to us at this point, we've got to, we've got to have the word of God, but we can't hide it under, 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 under the uh, basket. We cannot hide it. Uh, but if you got the light, put the light up on a, on a hill. Put the light up high. Let people see. Now, when you do that, people's not going to always like you because you bring the light in. People will walk away from you because uh, you, you're presenting a truth that mess with their gambling, that mess with their, uh, their pimping, that mess with their stealing, that mess with something that uh, mess with somebody else's wife or husband. Uh, and when you bring the light to the situation and you said, God says, no, we ought not to do that. They will put your light out if they can. <laughs> They'll put your light out. So God said, you delight. Stand on the hill. Present yourself. No, the Bible said they don't even light a lamp and put it on the basket. They put it on a lampstand that he may give light to all those who are in the house. God has called us and earth is our house. Earth is a place where we live uh, temporarily. But our home really is in heaven. But for those who are here, we are we are to give them light so that they can see Jesus. So Jesus says it this way. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. So God is saying to us that we need to uh, let people see the Jesus in us. And if we let people see the Jesus in us, then God will get the glory. They know we didn't do it of ourselves. They will realize that. They know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. They will know if we, if we proclaim that Jesus is the light. Now the Bible said, blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my na name's sake. Well, let's, let's, let's look at that for a minute. So if, if you're talking about walking as children of light, if you're talking about putting yourself up so people can see the Jesus in you, the Bible said you will be you will be persecuted. You will re be reviled. They will talk about you. They will say all kinds of things, all, all kinds of things about you falsely, the Bible said. Kinds of evil against you. They'll do all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. But this is what Jesus is telling us as children of light. He said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So it's nothing new. If you if they kill Jesus, who is the Lord of all, if they kill Jesus on the cross, and, and the, do you think they will let you go if you proclaim him? Now, Jesus had a lot of power. 
He, he did a whole lot of things and they, they still attacked him. They still attacked him and they, and they put him to death. You don't have that kind of power of yourself like Jesus had. So therefore, if they went after Jesus, you can be sure if you lift the same message that Jesus lift up, you will be persecuted as everyone before you who trusted in God, all the prophets had. But Jesus says, rejoice. This is a time of rejoicing. Man, me, I, I'm preaching that, but my, my, my spirit said, hey, do you, can you grab, I'm, I'm working with it. I'm working with it. Yeah, you, you, everything, day by day, moment by moment, we must practice walking in the light. You know, one of the things I've discovered in the, in the Bible, it says that, that uh, uh, it says, weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God talks about the trials and tribulations we have, but we must rejoice in the meantime. Because even if we die in the process, we live in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So not only we walk in the light. Now, John, uh, John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, Jesus was having a meal with Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the darkness, the dark rulers wanted to put both Jesus and Lazarus to death. Now, let me tell you what's going on here. Jesus got word from Mary and Martha, the, uh, the sisters of Lazarus, that Lazarus was very sick. And they kind of uh, asked Jesus to come back quickly. Come back and help my brother. Help, help your friend. Come back, Jesus. Come back. And the Bible said that when Jesus got the message, he stayed a couple of more days. He didn't rush back. And so when Jesus got back, Lazarus had been four days and the Bible used to tell stinking dead. Amen. Uh, he had been four days dead because uh, Jesus, uh, Lazarus, uh, the sisters, one of them, they said, by this time, Jesus, he stinketh. And he's been dead long enough to, uh, to, to be smelly. And they said to Jesus, in essence, because he's stinking, there ain't no hope. You can't resusc resuscitate him. This is a dead man. And I think that's the, I think that's the point where God is, is hidden on this part that by the, 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 the uh, sisters are saying, by this time, he stinketh. In other words, he, they're saying, you, you know, why, if you had gotten back here while he was living, you would have had an opportunity to do something like you always kind of do, help those people. But this man is is decomposing, he's stinking, he's beyond uh, your ability uh, to do anything. <laughs> Jesus said, did not I tell you? Did not I tell you that I am the resurrection and life? I didn't tell you I'm going to be the resurrection and life. I'm the resurrection and life right now. In other words, I have life in my hand right now. I don't have to go to the cross. I don't have to wait for that day. I am resurrection. And so he says to them, this seems to be a very difficult moment. And it seems like there is no hope. But I want you to know that I am the light of the world. And in such being the light of the world, I have the power to speak to death itself. And I said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said that Lazarus, he who was dead, got up from the grave and came forth. Why is that? Because Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus has the answers. So Jesus, Jesus pulled Lazarus up out of the grave. And so now we come to this point. Now, some, not long before Jesus, uh, not long after that, Jesus is on his way to go to uh, Jerusalem to die. And he stops by uh, Lazarus home with Mary and Martha, his sister. And they threw a meal for him, a little something for him to eat. And the Bible said that at the table, at the table, there sat Lazarus, the ex-dead man. The ex-dead man sat at the table eating a pork chop. No, he probably wouldn't eat a pork chop. But he was eating. 
<laughs> the Jews didn't do much with the swine. That's why I said he probably wouldn't need eating. Now, but 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 he was at he was at the table eating. Now, the Bible says that when the when the when the ruler saw Lazarus, who was dead, eating, they decided not only now are we gonna kill Jesus. We've got to kill Lazarus. Why are they killing a man that has come back from the dead? Why do they want Lazarus dead? Because Lazarus got a situation going on now that Lazarus is light. Because when people see him, they believe that Jesus has power. And the more you believe in Jesus, the more power you and I will have. We will be able to overcome the darkness. We will be able to walk with Jesus. We will be able to have the power of God inside of us. We will be able to speak to the darkness and the light will come on. Somebody help me with this thing. So Lazarus is light, but the darkness does not like light. So God is saying to us, if you love me and walk in light, the world will hate you. So that's how it was, but but uh, but 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 it seemed like darkness does not like light and will do everything to put it out. But the Bible says, nevertheless, even among the rulers, some of the people you wouldn't think would believe, many believed in him because of the Pharisees, uh, but because the Pharisees did not confess him, they because of the Pharisees, they would not confess uh, Jesus because of the Pharisees. They, they, they wanted to, they go put him out of the synagogue. So some of them didn't want to, go, they didn't want to get out of the synagogue. They want to be a part of the synagogue. Beloved, sometimes a good thing can be a bad thing if it keeps you from a better thing. So sometimes if, if this, you got a good thing going on, but it's, it's getting you, keeping you from being close to God. It's keeping you from the light. And sometimes people get caught up in, 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 in clubs and organizations and, and all these kind of things and, and lodges and all these type things. They might be somewhat of a good thing but if it keeps you from serving Jesus Christ you need to get away from them Amen. but they couldn't let they couldn't let the synagogue go and the Bible said for for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God then Jesus cried out with a loud voice this is what Jesus said he who believes in me believes not in me uh, but he believes in the one who sent me. Uh-huh. He's talking about his father. I have come as a light, Jesus said, in, in, in um, 1245. Jesus said, um, I have come as a light into the world. But whoever believes in me, that whosoever believes in me should not be abide in darkness. So if I come into Christ, I should be able to see. I should be able to see what the devil's doing. I should be able to see what the devil's trying to play or what games he's playing because I abide in Jesus Christ. And if you abide in Jesus Christ, you will have the light of God inside of you. And if anyone hears my word, Jesus said, and does not believe, I will not judge him for I did not come to judge the world, but my ministry is to save the world, to get you out of your darkness. That's what he came to do. I came to say, uh, he, he who rejects me, says Jesus, and does not receive my words, has that which judges him. The words that I have spoken to you will judge you in that last day. You know what God is saying? If you don't grab a hold of this Bible and learn the word of God, for the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. So if you, if you get into this word, then you'll be able to understand. You'll be able to, to divide. You'll be able to see the darkness. You'll see the darkness. You'll know what is darkness. You'll know which is of the devil. You'll see the devil any kind of way he comes. Because the Bible said he makes himself, the devil makes himself out to be an angel of light. And some people think they're serving the Lord when in essence they are serving the devil because he's a great fake. Hmm. So Jesus said, the word that I speak is going to judge you. And if you don't know the word of God, you're going to be judged by something you spent no time in. 
Jesus said, he said that, for I have not spoken on my, on, on my own authority. He said, but my father, who went, who sent me, gave me a command that I should say what I, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know his commandment is an everlasting life. The words of the Lord are pure words, like fire, uh, like silver uh, tested in the uh, a fire of seven times. That's what the word of God is. The word of God is so pure. So the word of God, when you get into it, will give you everlasting life. It is the life that comes. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. You know, there was a time in the Bible when Moses went up into the mountain. And for 40 days, Moses was in the mountain. And while he was in the mountain, he spoke, God spoke to him and he talked with God. And the Bible said that when Moses came down out of the mountain, Moses had spent so much time in the mountain with the Lord that when he came down, the people had had to put a veil over their face so that they could see. They could not because Moses was so bright. What God is saying then, the children of light should spend their time in the word of God, study the word, study to show you are self approved unto God so that the people will see you and say, wow, where did you get this light from? And it came from the word of God. Lord, have mercy on our souls. So you are the children of God that have light. The Bible said, if you have this life, if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, write it down. We don't have time to read it to you. Uh, you won't have time to find it. But uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse 1 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we don't faint. We, got, we have received mercy when we came to Christ. But have, this is what we have done. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but, but by manifold manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. The Bible said, but if our gospel be hid, if they can't see the word of God, they cannot see the love of God. They cannot see the forgiveness of God. It is hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world has blinded the, the minds of them which believe. Now notice it didn't say the eyes, it said the mind. The mind has been blinded. See, if your mind's messed up, it don't matter what your eyes see. The mind, the mind gives a right interpretation to what you see. If your mind's blinded, you cannot see the light. You, you're sitting up in a big, big, big pool of darkness. And you can't even see. You think you're in the light. The Bible said that uh, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. And, and the reason he blinds the mind, lest the light of the glorious gospel, the devil doesn't want you to know what, what, what believers know. The devil doesn't want you to know that you are a new creature. The, the, the devil doesn't want you to know that if any man, woman, boy, girl being Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. Your mind's been blinded. So if you're struggling out in this world today and, and you're not walking in the ways of God, ain't no question about it. Your mind has been blinded by the the evil one. So he says, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto you. He blinds your eyes, show your mind, so that when your eyes look and see what Jesus is doing, you can't even understand it. You can't understand the light. Yes. Now the Bible talks to us as Christians and it says, uh, for God, who, um, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts. How I got changed when I began to listen to the word of God, when I began to see God's word, when I began to seek God's word, the light of God's word began to shine in my heart. And I saw, man, where I was going was leading me to destruction. It was leading me to destruction. It was leading me into darkness. So the word of God came shining into my heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So, so the 
the word of God opened me up so I could see Jesus Christ. Amen. And do you know what? The Bible says we have this treasure, this treasure of God inside of us that the excellency uh, of the power may be of God, not of us. And because the Bible tells us, how many of you know, you probably already know by now, you are troubled on every side. Even church people are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. We, we have troubles. We have troubles like everybody else. But we're not distressed. Like we, we, we can't, we can't, we're not, we're not going to make it. No, we're going to make it. Because he who promised is faithful. Now, we are troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. We are perplexed. I don't know which way to go sometimes. But I ain't in despair. I see the darkness out here. I see what's happening in America. I see what's happening in the world. And yet I know there's a bright side somewhere. And that old song used to say, there's a bright side somewhere. Don't you stop until you find it. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> we perfect, but not forsaken. We, we are persecuted, in other words. Um, we are troubled on every side, but not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Sometimes we even cast down, but we ain't destroyed. We always bearing about in the body the dying of Jesus Christ. We suffer like he did on the cross. We suffer in a fashion not exactly like he did on the cross. But, that, but because we are his people, we will suffer. Uh, uh, we have our own crosses to follow while we take up Jesus' cross. And the reason we, we are bearing about in, the, uh, in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the life of Jesus Christ may be manifest in our bodies. Why do we go through the trials and the tribulation? So that the life of Jesus Christ might be manifest in our human bodies. That others might see the light and trust God. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies, bodies, mortal bodies, this physical body. Because Jesus is alive, we can see him. For which cause we don't faint. But though our outward man, this is awesome. Though this outward body that I'm living in perishes. Yet, ooh, this inward man is renewed by day and day. Listen, God is saying to us, even though this physical body is getting weaker and weaker as time goes on, the inner man, that person who has been born again, the one who has been brought to the light of Jesus Christ, is being renewed day by day. For Paul says, for our light afflictions, these things we're going through, which is but for a moment, work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen. And here's the problem we have. We look at what's going on in the world. We look at this. We look at the troubles we have. For the things, for the things, but not at the things which are not seen. We, we need to look at the things that are not seen. We need to look at and see the hand of God behind what's going on. What's going on behind COVID. There's a lot going on behind COVID we can't see. And the reason why it's going on because God is setting up his time and he's setting up his people for that time in which uh, the end will come. But at, we are to be, as the children of God, we are to be looking at the things which are not seen. We got to look at what God's doing here. And God is doing a mighty work right now. I think that when the church is shut down, what, who would have ever thought that the church would be shut down? Who would have ever thought that the church would be so aggressive in getting the gospel out on, over the airwaves, over the internet, through virtual means? Who would have ever thought it would be like this? But God has said in the end time that he, what he's going to do is simply this. He says that, that, um, that the gospel must go to all the people. I've had people call me from Canada. Today, I, 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 uh, uh, yesterday, as it was, uh, I, I, I was praying with someone, with a, a couple, several people in, in, in Colombia from America. We were praying together. Uh, 
Our outward man is perishing, but God has re is renewing us day by day. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen. And you know what God is telling us? Uh, the things which are seen are temporal. We spend so much time dealing with things that are going to pass away. How wonderful the house is. How wonderful my kids' education is. How wonderful, how wonderful my job is. How wonderful my clothes. How wonderful this is and how wonderful. Those are all temporal things. They will not last. And you spend all your time on your bank account and on your financial portfolio. And you will find out all of it's going to pass away. Only what you do for Christ is going to be eternal. So what I said to you a couple of months ago, man, I said, whatever you have, write temporary on it. Just write temporary on it because it's going to pass away. And on, the, on this life that you have now, you just write, write temporary on that too. Because in the process of time, you're going to leave here. Now, if you're a born again person, it's going to be a, it's not going to be temporary. It's going to be permanent. You're going to be ushered into the presence of God. Why will you be ushered into the presence of God? Because the blood of Jesus Christ took away your guilt and your shame. Huh. Permanent. You are now lights in a dark world. God has commissioned you, called you to go out and tell a dying world that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It's permanent. The light will usher you into a permanent state of bliss. But darkness will usher you into a permanent state of hell. So God tells us, therefore, be, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also have loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice of God for a sweet smelling aroma. He offered himself in a way that was pleasing to God was a sweet smelling aroma. So when God saw me and God sees me as not being for all of what he wanted me to be, he smells the aroma of Jesus Christ. He smells the sweetness of Jesus Christ. And he, uh, he, he attributed it to my account. He, he imputes me with his righteousness. I have the light. I have life eternal. I am a child of God. And now that Bible says, uh, 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 for, uh, for fornicators and uncleanness and, and covetousness, uh, let it not, not, not be named among you as fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, don't even talk, nor coarse jesting. I've been in the presence of some people lately, and man, baby, did they talk some terrible talk. They cuss. I never heard such cussing in all my life. And I said to myself, it's an indication how deep, how deep and how dark the darkness is in them. It comes out of their mouth. And some of you looking at me right now, you can cuss, a, cuss up a storm, I bet, if you're not in the light. Well, you've been to church, you go to church, yeah, you go to church. But, but if, if the church ain't in you, then the darkness is there. You got to cast the darkness out. You got to ask God to remove the darkness from you so that you'll be able to show forth the light of God. Bible says, for no, no unclean fornicator, unclean person, no covetous who is an adult or has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let us, let no one deceive you, the Bible says, with empty words. For because of these things, a wrath of God comes upon the children of God. Therefore, do not be partakers with them in their sins of, 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 of filthiness and foolish talking and justing, uh, coarse justings and, and, fit, and, and um, things which are unfitting. 
But we as the children of God ought to be giving thanks to God and giving praise to God. One of the things I'm, I'm, I'm learning through this crisis that we are going through, I'm learning that I, I have a lot of stress coming. I got a lot of things dealing with when you are pastoring a church and you got different people having different problems. You got people who have lost loved ones. You got people who got ones who are sick. You got people that lost their job. You got people that got headaches. You got people that have, have having surgeries. You have people got go to all these things. And you you got to give them a word. You got to give them something to understand. You got to give them something to hold on to. And help them to understand that God has given you an inheritance. Stay in there with God and he'll make a way for you. Now, it says in, in, in um, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. For we were once darkness. Huh. But now... You are light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. I used to do that. I used to do this. I did that. I did that. Okay. Now, when I come to Christ, then I, I'm working at this thing. And God has given me the power uh, uh, to overcome because he has taken me out of the darkness and placed me in Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, if I abide in him and his word abide in me, then I will bring forth much fruit. I've already been given the power, the position to be able to overcome. For he took me out of darkness and he put me into his son, Jesus Christ. And John chapter 15 says, if I abide in him, his words abide in me, then maybe go, he says, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done for you. You can be what God wants you to be. And the God even tells us and warns us. He says, have no fellowship with, with, the, with the unfruitful workers, uh, works of darkness. Have no fellowship with them. But rather, re re expose them. Reveal their darkness. But the Bible said it's, it's, it's a shameful thing even to speak of the things which people have done in, in secret. But all things are exposed and made manifest by the light. God said you are the light of the world. Be the light of the world. You will expose the darkness. You will bring people out of darkness. Man came in my office the other week. And he was talking about his problems and what have you. And I just told him straight up, you need to have Jesus Christ. You got to get Jesus Christ. He said, well, I've heard I, I, I have relatives who, who, were, who were ministers in the gospel. I said, yeah, what does that got to do with anything? And, 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 and you don't have no light. You don't have no light. What you were, what, what they got. I said, man, what you need to do is get this word for yourself because the Bible is your light. It's your flashlight. And the thing about this flashlight, you get the flashlight inside of you. You don't ever leave your flashlight behind. You don't ever, you don't ever forget your flashlight because David said, I word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. That word is the light. And when the light comes in you, you are shameful of the things you used to do. You are shameful of the things you used to, used to say. You are shameful of the way you acted. But now in Christ, you've been forgiven of that. You've been, you've been washed with blood. Redder than that blood, the color. Red blood. The blood of God himself. You've been washed in the blood. You that new creature. So Jesus said walk. Walk circumspectly. So you got Jesus inside. You got light inside of you. Work, walk with wisdom. Don't let them trap you. Don't let the world fool you. Don't walk like a fool. That's what he said. Not, not as fools. But you walk as wise people. And this is why he says it in verse Ephesians 5, 16. Redeeming the time. You know what that means? You are taking advantage of the moments you have. Because the moments are slipping away from you. You may not be here tomorrow. Oh, for, for, for even, even stronger than that. You may not be here the rest of my sermon. Or maybe I won't even preach the rest of my sermon. I have no idea. But the time I have, 
I must use that time to show forth the light of Jesus Christ because the days are evil and people need to be saved. Do you know God wants to save you? If you're not saved today and you're listening to me, make no mistake about it. No matter how bad your mess is or has been, there is a God that loves you. And wants to save you. And do not be drunk with wine and all of that. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another. How, how, do, you, how do you make it in this kind of uh, difficult time? You speak to one another. Now let me talk to you about that. That's why it's so often you know, it's difficult. It's difficult ministering to people over the telephone. It's difficult, difficult uh, watching people on TV. But, but God is saying that you got to be able to speak to one another. Heart to heart, breast to breast. And the devil has brought about this thing where we call COVID. I, I, I come up to you, I feel, I, I go to reach for you. Then some say, no, you'll be offended by that. I might give you something. Something might happen. Yeah, the devil has made it very difficult for people to be able to communicate one with another. And that's why this thing is so damnable. Because people are not able to share. I need you. How many of you know every now and then you need a hug? Somebody say amen. You need to touch somebody. You need to feel somebody. You need to feel them. So we shut down and we shut out and all of that stuff. But the Bible says that, that, uh, that we should speak to one another in psalms and hymns. Psalms and hymns. Psalms and hymns. You know, hymns is something that has been kicked out the door. Hymns tell the story of the gospel or the word of God Verse by verse by verse. Sometimes like in gospel music, we'll repeat the same thing over 500 times. Go, go, go. Mm -mm. Jesus, 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 Jesus. But a hymn starts at the top and tells a story in maybe three or four verses. And then you have a refrain. We need to speak to each other. We need to hear those songs. How many, how many of you remember that song? Um, uh, oh, I can't remember what it is. It's a, Melodies from heaven. When you go through the storm, <laughs> how many people, how many people, I, I visit people in the nursing home, I visit people in prison, nobody asks melodies from heaven. You, you die and you call melodies from heaven. You want blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. You want something with some meat in it. You want a hymn. You want a hymn. It's, it's singing God's word back to you. The message of the gospel. So God is saying to us, those of you who want to have the light of God in you, you need to have, you need to talk to one another in Psalms, the word. The Psalms is 150 Psalms in this book. And they talk about Christ. And they talk about his grace. And they talk about his mercy. And they give us light in the inner person. And we can walk in light. But you got to know the word of God. Not only that, that uh, uh, in psalms and hymns, and in their spiritual songs, they have their purpose. Singing and making melodies in your heart to the, uh, to the Lord God. Those of you who have come to know the light, you've got to remind yourself. You've got to refresh yourself. You've got to recharge yourself. You've got to be charged on the psalms, on the hymns, on the spiritual songs, on the singings, and making melodies in your heart. Giving thanks always to God. Always give God thanks. Even when things are not going your way. Giving thanks always to God. For all things to God. The Bible somebody said, you mean all things? Lord. All things. Corona. David said. I will bless the Lord 
at all times. His praises shall be continually in my mouth. David went through some mess. Yeah. Those things. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. We have to come together. We have to submit to one another as the saints of God. As, or as children of the light. Jesus died to take away our sins so that we can have the forgiveness of sin and the peace of God that passes all understanding. So walk as the children of light. This thick darkness will not last forever. For the believers, that is, in Jesus, he has made a place for you in his kingdom. You have the promise of Jesus that there will be a wonderful day of light. It will be a day of rejoicing. You will be a brand new person. Songwriters said, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We're going to sing and shout the victory. Troubles will not last forever. <laughs> no more death. No more sickness. No more troubles. You will be glorious. You are the children of light, and you must walk in the light so others can find their way home to God the Father, to Jesus the Messiah, and to the Holy Spirit, his empowerer, and our empowerer, in Jesus' name. If you have not asked Christ into your life, now is the time. You know, Jesus is calling for you today. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Will you hear his voice today? Will you open up your heart and say, Lord, in all of this darkness, I want the light of God that surpasses all understanding. I want to be a light and salt. I want to be what you want me to be. I will serve you with all my heart. Lord, I've sinned. I've come short. But the blood you shed on that cross at Calvary, you shed enough blood to take away all my sins, past, present, and yet to come. Oh, God, would you come into my life? Would you forgive me of all of my sins? I know, God, now from the scriptures you said that whosoever call on you shall not be lost but shall be saved come in lord jesus make me your savior make me your child i want you to be lord master of my life if you ask god in today he will do that he will save you call us contact us contact us you know, the information is following and um, let us know if you got blessed by the message let us know if you made that decision to ask Christ to come in your life. And let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.